had some visitors. Do you want to? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Yeah, we we wanted to uh, we wanted some of the folks that uh, that uh, work with um, uh, Clarison with uh, uh, and and local green church green church service. So we. This is Officer Baloo. Officer Baloo. He's, he's a supervisor. Outstanding. Outstanding. Yeah. Thank you. Well, thank you for being here, and uh, you know, if you just say a few words because we've had a chance to chat for a little bit about you know wanting to provide a little more, a little more visibility down here in this area for building for the safety and security of tenants and, and whatnot. So we cover fifty blocks. Um, this neighborhood is the most challenging by nature of our location, proximity to Skid Row, but also because we have so many residents here and events like Art Walk, we have all the marches and the parades down Broadway, uh, we have all the filming, we just we have a lot here. And our budget is very small comparatively to the fashion district and the DC bid, which have a lot more territory and a lot more high-rise buildings, which is how they gain more capital. Um, but we do do a lot with what we do have, because like, for example, our internal is just myself and, and one office member, uh, 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 Paula, and she does all of our marketing and coordinating, service coordinating. Um, many of the other even the ones of our size, have at least five or six employees internally, but we just don't have a budget for that because it would be taking away resources that go out the field. So pretty much most of what we have goes out into uh, our clean and safe teams. Um, we do more trash than the purple shirt DC did. Um, which their territory is enormous. Um, and again, it's due to our proximity to Skidmore. Um, it's due to a lot of the wholesalers and people who put a lot of their trash out on the street instead of having a dumpster in their buildings. Um, it's a lot of the vending that has been quasi-legalized, uh, and yet there's no plan to deal with the trash. And then, you know, at the end of the day, when they had a bunch of customers who just kind of leave it for us to take. So we just have a lot, a lot of demand in this neighborhood. Um, that being said, we're, we have a 24 hour hotline number. Um, we respond to calls. So we could promise you more visibility, but if we're getting called elsewhere for emergencies, we're going to respond to them. We're not going to, we don't have enough staff to just pick this up. Uh, and we do anchor points. So we also respond to areas that have a high, in high incident rate. So, for example, Spring Street between 5th and 6th um, and 6th and 7th is incredibly demanding for us. We've had things like not just a 4118, which is somebody just lying there on the sidewalk or shooting up, but people getting assaulted, people getting punched in the face. These are going to be calls and things that we're going to respond to more frequently and faster um, because that's just like the LAPD, it's considered more of an emergency. Um, just like a quick recap of uh, also what we're looking at is, um, I don't know if you guys are aware of all the propositions like Prop 47, 57, 8109. There's a lot of California early release programs. We've seen a lot of decriminalization of laws. So things that are offensive to people, like people shooting up or using, are now technical offenses. They're considered nonviolent. People don't do jail time. Um, if you find them offensive, then all I can say is please don't vote to decriminalize them because they're just going to sit there. There's really, we can't be the muscle for the neighborhood. We can't do anything the police can't do. Um, certainly your building security can be more visible in the doorways and, and sort of keep people moving along from around the building. The partnerships we have with buildings where they do cleaning outside, we do cleaning outside um, together, it, it keeps things at bay. Um, the, the buildings that sort of sit there with really no um, love from their ownership, they, you know, they depend on us to take care of it all and keep all the work off the way it doesn't happen. So um, also the areas where residents call us the most and call LAP the most to get the most response. And they respond to statistics. They all do. I mean, we just, we, We'll be here, and we are there very quickly unless we're on another job. I've had, I can't even count on this hand how many times I've had complaints that we just don't show up and it was actually something internal that was screwed up and they weren't doing the job. It's usually they're just right then, 
hour from the second you call LAP and there's like 45 minutes for an hour and a half wait. It's because they're, they're just overburdened. Um, something else we do is advocate a lot on behalf of downtown, um, lobby the uh, police force to get more resources here. Um, we've been successful often in getting more police, more mounted patrol, more bike units. Um, but again, letters that you guys want to participate in, sending to your mayor, to your council people, requesting more resources, always helps. Um, can I talk about the Mitchell really quickly? Sure. Um, so there's the Mitchell injunction. Um, we noticed all across the city, not just in downtown, a uh, proliferation of encampments. And you see them sitting there for weeks, months, um, growing. We have some, for example, one year where I live on Maple, uh, one man has, you know, almost an entire block of stuff. Um, the Mitchell injunction is something that our city attorney would like to settle. And the settlement is not really a settlement. It's kind of giving everything to the other side, which is the plaintiffs are saying that if you're arrested, your belongings, whatever they may be, would not be confiscated. So they remain there. They can remain there for weeks, months. People could pull for through them because they're on the sidewalk. But regardless, they're considered possessions for that individual. It could be a sofa, it could be three tents, not just one. There's no parameters to it. Um, what a bunch of stakeholders, and I'm a downtown resident too, we're, we're lobbying hard at, at City Hall, um, and that's what we need to do as, as people who live here and work here. It, it just to ask our city attorney to fight it. And if he doesn't want to fight it, to hire counsel to fight it, because it, it shouldn't be a constitutional right to have a sofa in Skid Row, which the parameters will now be Spring Street. Um, you can't have a constitutional right on Spring Street at 14 Spring. Right? Is this really the appropriate forum for your it political It is, because if we're concerned about public safety and issues on the sidewalks, which is what people call us for, this is pertinent to that. Um, so, uh, do you just... It's, it's information that I would think you would want to know to be aware of it. Sounds like your opinion. It's um, it's just the facts. That's all. Um, you can decide to debate it or not, but it's um, it's it's uh, they're out, they're saying that it's a constitutional right to have stuff in Skid Row from Spring to Alameda, third to eighth. Um, the rest of the city would be for now absolved of those um, conditions until somebody else sues. So you should just be made aware of this, um, that it's uh, going to City Hall on the 3rd of October, and if you have an opinion about it, you're allowed to come speak. Mm -hmm.